As many as 40 million people were out of work, downsized, laid off, or simply fired shortly after the economic shutdown this year due to COVID-19. Once thriving businesses, small and large, are now struggling to survive, our next guest knows all too well what it feels like to be out of work. And if you find yourself in this unfortunate situation, she's here to tell you about some very important steps you need to take immediately after you lose a job. Mary Carto's passion to reach out and uplift the millions of unemployed and underemployed people worldwide has increased since the publication of her devotional books, uh, Help for the Laid Off and Hope for the Laid Off. Mary Carto joins me now via Skype from her home in Houston, Texas. Mary, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, it's lovely to have you. Now, Mary, you understand firsthand what it feels like to go from happily employed to finding yourself out of work, not once, but actually twice, right? So Mary, can you, yeah, can you maybe talk about what you experienced and share your story with our viewers? Oh, for sure. Uh, I was a single mom during both layoffs. The first one was in the early 90s, lasted exactly two years. I learned so much about everything. I learned how to survive, not only survive, but thrive with joy as a single mom for two years. At the end of the first two-year layoff, not only did I get a job, I got the career change of my dreams without a college degree without training, without a foot in the door, okay? That's crazy. A layoff can be and often is one of the best things that can happen to someone. It depends on their response, okay? Got my job, eight years went by, having the time of my life doing what I was born to do. Got laid off again, out of the clear blue sky. Three weeks after my second layoff, I fell 16 feet out of a tree. What? I broke myself. What was I doing in the tree? I was trying to prune the tree myself. I fell 16 feet off the top rung of my ladder. A single mom has to do what a single mom has to do. When you don't have a job, you don't have money, you don't have a boyfriend, you do what you have to do. A week, a week later, I'm in my home office, I'm in such pain, and I'm crying and I'm like, God, are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> why would you allow me to be laid off again? And why would I have this accident? I mean, what is the purpose? And boom, it was like, write a book about trusting me during a layoff. That's how Help for the Laid Off came to be written, quite frankly. You know, anything can happen during a layoff. It really depends on your response. So I learned a lot during the second layoff as well. So that's amazing. Now you've said that you're, yourself that you didn't see it coming and most people in that situation don't see it coming, right? But now that you've been through this a couple of times, do you have any advice for someone facing a job loss? I'm sure it's really a scary time for them. The first thing I would recommend is allow yourself to feel all the good, the gamut of emotions that you're feeling. It's very normal. You're going to feel anger, resentment, stress, worry, loss, anxiety, all of those things. The important thing is you cannot allow yourself to get stuck in any one of those jobs, any one of those emotions, especially self pity. Your job is to find a job. Okay. And you need to find someone reliable and trustworthy that you can talk to, maybe a friend, maybe a relative, maybe a pastor. Um, another thing I recommend, I don't know if y'all have these in Canada, but uh, in, in the United States, you could Google, it's called Unemployment Ministry or Job Support Group. Okay. You can go there and, you know, join those. The benefit of finding a job support group in your area is not only are you aware, get aware of available jobs, but they offer free counseling. They offer resume editing. They offer in coaching interview skills all for free by mm -hmm. volunteers. Um, exercise is critical. Uh, it really releases 
your anxiety, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I'm a writer, so putting things on paper, writing, imagine writing whatever you're thinking or feeling and knowing that nobody else is going to see it. That is beyond therapeutic. Um, one of the other things I learned to do, and it's very goofy, but I learned to barter for services. Now, listen, think about that. As a woman, you've got to look top notch when you go to a job interview. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So I learned, you know, I offered to babysit my hairdresser's infant son if she would cut and style my hair the morning of an interview. Now, if you're a mom, finding someone that you can trust with your baby, that's big. That's, that's like huge. So that was a win-win situation. I did not have to financially pay a hundred bucks to get my hair done, I, but I got it done. And okay. she was able to enjoy a night out with her husband. Another example, uh, I have a friend whose elderly mother had knee surgery and had to go to physical therapy three times a week. And this was during my second layoff. So times were very shaky back then. She was scared to death of losing her job. Right. I had all the time in the world. I took her mother to physical therapy for six weeks, three times a week for six weeks. She paid my utilities for that, for that amount of time. Oh, wow. So you can get your needs met, but you got to speak up. People are not mind readers. Right. You got to be a little creative too, it sounds like. For sure. For sure. You do what you have to do. <laughs> and it was fun. Oh, I'm sure. Now, you put together some steps that every person should take immediately when they lose a job. And I know you've mentioned some that are very helpful, but what, what can somebody do immediately afterwards? File for unemployment, that's the first obvious thing. Um, also, uh, the more you get out of the house, pandemic, you know, wear a mask, but if you can go out and volunteer, make your story known. The more you are out in the world helping people, the more opportunities you have to share your story. You never know who knows who and who's going to bring the right tip to you. Um, I also believe in praying, praying and having a gratitude journal. You know, I heard it said, what would it be like if you woke up tomorrow morning with only the people and things that you remember to be thankful for the night before? That had a profound effect on me. I mean, just think about it. So you may not have a job, but you have your health, you have family, you have friends, You've got a roof over your head. So um, another thing, this was really hard for me to learn, but swallow your pride and ask for help. Even you think your family and your friends, they want to help you, but it's very uncomfortable on the other side. I learned this after, after being laid off. It's very uncomfortable for them. So if you just say, listen, this is what I need. This is what I need. And just be very honest. And if they can help you, great. And if not, mm -hmm. move on and find someone that can. One thing I did, I mentioned during my first layoff, I had the career change in my dreams, but I had to work for it. Meanwhile, I looked for jobs that I had been doing for 20 years. I had a resume for that. But I also created a separate resume focusing on the skills that would highlight towards the job, the kind of jobs I wanted. That way I needed a job no matter what. I would take any job that came and then continue to look for the job I really wanted. So, I mean, you do what you have to do. And I, I, took, a, I took a lot of jobs that were very underpaying, uh, very quote beneath me, but you know what, when, you, when, when you're out of everything, your pride goes out the window and, and that's a very good lesson and I'm glad for that lesson. Yeah, and I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, like you said, and we're talking about looking for alternative sources of income and sometimes you just have to do that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, sold, I sold a lot of things. I had a lot of garage sales. 
Um, I, you know, as a single mom, I had to cash out my 401k and I took like a 30% tax hit. That really hurt. But uh, I obviously lived, you know, yeah. I had the support of friends and family and church. And so, yeah. Yeah. Now, Mary, do you have any tips for anyone needing to radically reduce their expenses and change their lifestyle, just kind of like change their whole household budget to adapt to their new reality? Um, well, get rid of cable, um, get rid of your house line and just have your cell phone. Um, an alternative would be if you needed to have your phone for internet, then get rid of your cell phone. Um, I don't know if y'all, surely you have libraries there. Um, get your entertainment and your books and your movies from the library for free. Why pay if you don't have to? Also, um, the libraries have computers. You can go and do your job search for free at the library. Um, you know, scale down what you like to eat. Uh, learn to cook very frugally. Um, we had tuna mac macaroni casserole more times than I can count. Um, if you need someone to take care of your pet while you're unemployed, let them adopt your pet temporarily. Um, shop at Goodwill, shop at uh, used clothing stores. Um, Get rid of the cable TV. Get it rid of the things that you do not need. Another thing that for any parents that are listening, my daughter was 9 to 11 during my first layoff. I really thought as a parent I would die. I thought I was the worst mother in the world because I couldn't get her school photos. I couldn't get her the band. It hurt me as a parent. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, my daughter... She'll tell you today, she's a 38-year-old uh, military wife, mom of two. She did not know that she was suffering back then. She said, Mom, I don't think that I never felt neglected. I never felt like I was doing without. And she learned how to create a budget, how to stick to a budget. She learned She's not who she is. Uh, she's not who she is based on what she looks, what kind of car she drives, what she's wearing. She learned the value of a dollar. She learned the, the difference between need and want. What kind of parent, good parent, doesn't want their kids to learn those hard life lessons? Well, they're right. not going to learn them on Easy Street. Right. They're just not. And so she's grateful that she went through those hard times and you come out a better, stronger, more compassionate person. Mm -hmm. And you, it probably brought you two closer because you spent so much more time together, which in a kid's eyes, that's all they really want from their parent, right? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And during my second layoff, she was, um, oh, don't make me do the math. I know she was <laughs> 19 at, at one point. Um, she actually worked and helped pay some of my bills without being asked. So wow. what kind of a kid does that? Yeah, exactly. Now, and, and she learned that through, you just, you learn through those hard times of adversity. You just do. Mm -hmm. Mary, what sort of feedback have you received from people who have read your three books? Um, you know, thank you for asking that. I actually have developed a lot of friendships since the first book was published. Um, it's very rewarding when people contact me via email or Skype, phone, Zoom, whatever. They'll say, Mary, you know, I want you to know I found a job. I started a business. I was doing this, but I thought of you. And it's like, I took your advice. The thing is, just because you've been doing A all of your life, I know you need a job and if that's the next job, go for it. But you don't have to always be doing that. Mm -hmm. You can go for what you want. Be bold, be courageous. What do you have to lose? President Trump says, what do you have to lose? <laughs> I mean, it's just true. What, what would have happened if I had not gone for my dream? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had it. 
If you don't ask, the answer will for sure be no. Well, that's true. There you go. Lots of fantastic advice in all of your books, including like how to land a job interview and all kinds of stuff. I wish we had all day to talk about this, but it looks like we are, it looks like we're running out of time, Mary, but I uh, appreciate having you on our show. Mary Cardo, author of Hope for the Laid Off, Help for the Laid Off, and Prayers for the Laid Off. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.